Hello, my name is Kyle Houchins. I'm a tech and a trainer for McNeil. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about T-splines. Remember that? So if you're like me, you might have a few T-splines models laying around. And with the new tools in V7, I wanted to talk to you about how you could use those old T-splines assets in V7. So if you look at V5 here, this is Rhino 5 with uh, T-splines installed. I've got two T-splines models in here, and you can see that if I pick it, if I turn on T-splines here and I pick it, I should get a sub-D model. If I get a base, I can get the base, I can modify it, all right? So everybody's, everybody remembers this. So when you export a T-splines model, we're simply going to hit the tab key and change them to box mode. See the, the mode where it's not smooth, T-spline zero, box mode, sub D zero, any of, the, any of the terms that you want to use, but we're going to want to export it in box mode. And we're going to say file, export selected. I'm going to pick this, and I'm going to just export it as a Rhino file. I'm going to just put it on my desktop for right now. And send it out. And then if I go to V7, I'm just going to go file, open, Actually, I'm going to import because I have a file going on here, but you can open as well. File import. And we'll find the file that we just made. And you'll see that it comes in to V7 as a smooth sub-D object. And if I pick it, you can see that it's a sub-D object. All right? Now, the difference is, if I go back to V5, the reason it's important to do it out as box mode, if I put this in smooth mode now, and I do the same thing, I say file, export selected, and I send this out. Send this out as prop smooth mode. Go back to V7, import this file. you'll see that it comes in as a poly surface. It actually does the nerves conversion in there. So if it's important for you to be able to edit this in sub-D mode, you want to make sure and export out of V5 as box mode. There is one additional option when importing box mode T-splines models, and there's a command that we've added called automatic sub-D from mesh, and I've just got it highlighted here. If I put it in the command line and run it, you'll notice that the default is Rhino 5 box mode T spline equals sub D. That means that if you bring a box mode sub D into V7, it's going to come in automatically smooth. In certain cases, you may not want that, so you can throw this switch and actually have the Rhino 5 box mode T spline come in as a mesh. So let's go ahead and leave that. We'll go file import. And let's bring in the prop one more time. Propeller box mode. And you'll notice that with that setting thrown, the V5 T-spline comes in as a mesh. Now, this, the simplest way to convert this is just to pick the mesh and run to sub-D. And it will then convert that for you. You can choose to keep your mesh, and then you've got the best of both worlds. You've got your smooth sub-D, you've got your input mesh, you can edit it, do whatever you want. But just one more option that we wanted to provide. Now, let's look at a little bit more difficult case. This prop is actually really well designed in the fact that it's all quads. It doesn't have any T-junctions or anything like that in it. But let's look at one that does. So this bike seat, if we look at this, we can see that it has lots of T-junctions in it. See all these? Again, we want to export this as box mode. So again, I'm going to hit the tab key. I'm going to say File, Export Selected. This is going to be what I'm going to export. And out it goes. Go back to B7. Import or open. I'm importing because I've got an existing file.
and in it comes. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice, every time there's a T-junction, it adds a triangular patch. And this can be really messy. Now, if you look at this part, if we actually go to rendered view and look at this part, it's not bad, but you can see that there is some there is some topological issues in here. You can see this little dent right here, over here, and stuff like that. So we'd actually want to fix that. And the the way to fix that, and I'm going to just pop up a, a finished part here. The way that we're going to fix this. is we're just simply going to go in and delete the edges that we don't need. So in this case, I'm going to set my selection filter to edges. I'm going to double click and delete. And I'm just going to delete the edges that we don't need. The idea behind this is you want to go through and make logical quad patch strips. See that? See how we've just pulled that out? and I'm not going to go through the whole process here, but that's essentially the gist of it. We just want to we just want to go through, find any edges that are unnecessary, and delete them. And we just want to get nice orderly quad rows here. And situations where you might run into problems, go ahead and delete the whole face and then just fill the hole. Eventually, you'll end up with something like this if you go through and clean all this up, and you can see that you end up with a very high quality part with not a ton of work. It's a little bit of cleanup, but the results are worth it to not have to remodel the entire thing. So you can see that we can pull all this out. I removed the center section here because actually in the original T-Splines model it was a separate part, but uh, uh, we can certainly add that back in with bridge or anything else that we wanted to use. So I hope that gives you a little bit of information on how to save your old T-Splines parts. I'm Kyle Houchins, and go have fun with subdies. Thanks.